lot of people, particularly in like the LGBT community, are worried just because in the past during segregation era or when women were trying to, you know, get the right to vote, religious liberty was often used to defend and justify that discrimination. So a lot of people in the LGBT community just have this fear due to the past examples that that's what's going to happen. So I was wondering if you could speak to that. Well, you know, it's interesting you bring up that example. If you actually look at the history in this country of defeating slavery, if you look at the history of defeating Jim Crow, there's leaders in the church that played a critical role. Re yeah, Reverend yeah. Martin Luther King totally. stood up against, you know, you read the letter from the Birmingham jail where he calls upon the conscience of Christians to stand up. Yes. Uh, but a lot of religious people also use the Bible to defend segregation, to defend slavery. So, well, and so I'm just saying, like, just, you know, I think religious freedom is so important. It's so crucial for all religions. LGBT people are worried that they will directly be discriminated against because of the bill. And, but, but we don't have a right to force anyone to abandon their faith. Tonight at the rally, we're going to have people from all over the country who have lived according to their faith and have been persecuted for it. And, and, and it is one of the foundational commitments of who we are as Americans to respect diversity, to, to respect the right of every American to live according to his or her conscience, his or her faith. Sure, but for example, still in a lot of states, LGBT people can be fired for just being gay or for just being trans. Um, that's totally legal. I mean, how do you feel about that? That just doesn't sound very American to me. You know, at the end of the day, what we should not be doing is persecuting people who follow their faith. Like, I'll give an example, one of the one of the couples that's going to be featured tonight. I know, but what about the question about LGBT people getting fired for just strictly being gay or trans? Well, well, well what we're seeing right now is, is actually, we're seeing Bible-believing Christians being persecuted. So, for example, one of the couples... discriminating against LGBT people. No, for living according to their faith. So, for example... Yeah, but you they, say people would have right, that I'm, argument in segregation era. I, I'm happy to answer your question, but not to have a back-and-forth debate. Yeah. So, one of the couples tonight who's going to be featured is Dick and Betty Odegaard. They're from Grimes, Iowa. They're a wonderful couple. Um, they own an historic Lutheran church. For many years, they hosted weddings in their church until a couple of years ago two men came and wanted to have a same-sex wedding ceremony in their church. Now, now the Oath Guards are devout Mennonites, and so they respectfully explained that it would be contrary to their faith for them to celebrate in, the, in their church a wedding that was contrary to their religious beliefs and teaching. The Oath Guards were promptly sued. They were dragged into protracted litigation. They ended up spending $5,000 to settle the case, and they made a promise never again to host another wedding in their church. They were driven out of business. This month, they laid off their employees. That is fundamentally wrong. It's inconsistent with who we are. And, and let me point out on the flip side, let's take the other side. No one has a right to force someone else to abandon their faith or their conscience. Imagine, hypothetically, you had a gay florist. And imagine that two evangelical Christians wanted to get married and the gay florist decided, you know what, I disagree with your faith. I don't want to provide flowers. I would say that I would say they should provide the flowers. Just and, like that and, and just like gay, gay people should be able to get married in the church they want. If I disagree with your faith and don't want to participate, I'm and you know what? There are lots of other people you can buy flowers from. Just like we don't have a right to force a Jewish rabbi to conduct a Christian wedding ceremony. We don't have a right to force a Muslim imam to conduct a Jewish wedding ceremony. We are a country that respects pluralism and diversity, and there is this liberal intolerance that says that anyone that dares follow a biblical teaching of marriage, that is the union of one man and one woman, must be persecuted, must be fined, and must be driven out of business. more tolerance for LGBT people who have constantly been persecuted in this country. It used to be illegal. They were thrown in jail, and, uh, and we've come a really, really long way. In jail. Gay people used to be thrown in jail when it was yeah. illegal in this country. It is interesting right now. Do you know where gay people are being persecuted right now? ISIS all over the world. Is, but all ISIS world. is executing gay people. Iran is executing homosexuals. Yes. And on the left, you hear complete silence That's not true. about Iran hanging homosexuals, and yet the Obama administration is sending over $100 billion to a regime that murders homosexuals. Christians that is fundamentally Russia, wrong. Christians in Uganda, Christians in Jamaica, all persecuting uh, gays to a really, really violent extent. And the, the, but but does that trouble you at all that you draw 
a moral equivalence between Christians in Jamaica and radical Islamic terrorists in ISIS that are beheading children. No, just uh, they're not a, they're not other gay persecution around the world. They're, but they're not morally equivalent. Murder is murder is murder and it is wrong. And it's wrong across the board and there is a difference between a community like Jamaica that may have different standards, may, may not be celebrating a gay pride parade, but they're not murdering people. And if they were murdering people, people, it would are, be wrong. A lot of gay people are getting killed. But in Iran and ISIS, it is the governmental body that is executing them for and being homosexual. And why does the Obama administration not stand against us? I don't know. I would love to talk to Obama about it. That'd be great. Well, good. Then we're agreed on that. No, right? well, we're, we're not. Don't do that. We're, we're agreed on Ma'am, we've had a, a, a long discussion. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. What does it say about America that you can have a pork chop in one hand and you're having a conversation with someone about gay discrimination in the workplace? Well, and see, it's interesting what that conversation was about. I think that conversation was about the persecution of religious liberty. And she didn't want to have that particular conversation. But listen, we are a wonderful country where everyone has a First Amendment right to speak out and to have different views. It's one of the sad things of the modern Democratic Party is that they try to stifle dissent, so much so that every Senate Democrat in Congress last year voted to repeal the free speech protections of the First Amendment. And indeed, Hillary Clinton is campaigning on a constitutional amendment to repeal the free speech protections of the First Amendment. I have to tell you, when I stood up and opposed that, I gave a speech on the Senate floor next to a giant picture of Ted Kennedy. And Ted Kennedy said during that debate many years ago, he said, we haven't amended the Bill of Rights in over 200 years. Now is no time to start. I believe in free speech for everyone, including someone I disagree. You have a constitutional right to speak. Like John Stuart Mill, the best cure for bad speech is more speech, not government censorship. And I also wanted to ask you, um, I don't know if you knew that that person that was grilling you was actually actress Helen Page. I, so, I did not.